Welcome to part 2 of the procedural Fido Texas tutorial by PeerPlay. In the previous part we've created the calculations of positions based on a Fido Texas algorithm. In this part, instead of instantiating an object for each position, we will apply the positions to one game object that contains a component of a trail renderer. At first, the object will change its position each frame, but next we will implement a lerp between its previous and next position at a certain speed. The final thing we will add in this part is a step size. Based on a degree we specified, we can then choose how many points it will skip to calculate its next position, allowing us to create different results based on the same degree. With all these features, we will then be able to create a composition, using multiple trail renderers, different colors and applying different degrees. This is the result of what we will be making in this part. I think it looks amazing. For this part we will create a trail object and a trail renderer needs a material. If you want to follow along, you can find a download package in the description that includes two materials and textures for our trail renderer. Let's first create our object with a trail renderer, so go to game object create empty and we're going to rename this to Philo Taxis Trail. Now this trail requires a trail renderer and we're going to add our script of the Philo Texas to it. Let's open up this script and we're going to make some changes in this script. Now this script was for instantiating an object but we're not going to instantiate an object anymore so we can delete this line. Uh, now let's go to this public float and we see this C here and the C stands for scale so let's refactor this. We can do this by pressing Ctrl R and another times Ctrl R and now we can type in a new name for this and it's going to be called scale. Now the n is going to be refactored to number and let's also refactor the count to number as well. I uh, will call this number. We're not going to use the update function, we're going to use a fixed update so let's just remove everything here right now. Let's also remove this line there you go. And we also don't need the dot scale. Let's remove that. Now I'm going to change the number to number start and make a private integer uh, called number. Now as we're going to use a trail renderer, let's also get the trail renderer component. So let's say trail renderer, trail renderer. I should set private in front of this. Now let's uh, make an awake function. And in the awake function, we're going to set the trail renderer to be the get component trail renderer. Now we want this number to be the number start at start. So let's say number is going to be number start. Now we want our game object to start at the position of the number start in the file of Texas calculation. So we're going to say that transform dot local position is going to be calculate Philo Texas at degree with scale and the number. And here it will take the number start that we've just specified in the line before that. Now let's create a fixed update. Now just for testing out if our trail renderer works, we'll increase the Philo Texas position each frame, but next we will add our lerping and step size to the equation. So let's say Philo Texas position is going to be calculate Philo Texas and this is actually the same as here. Let's copy paste that. And here we're saying transform the local position is going to be a new vector 3 and it will take the Philo Texas position dot x, the Philo Texas position dot y and 0 for the z. Now in this update, we will just say that number will add 1 to it, plus plus. Now let's set the degree to 137.5, the scale is going to be 1, and the number start is going to be just 0. Now let's add our material to the trail renderer, so let's go to our materials and select this material. Now the characteristics of a trail is that it disappears after a certain time, so we can increase this time to make it not disappear that quickly. Let's make it just 500, and we can increase or decrease the width of the trail. I'm going to set it at 0 
and let's try it out. You can see that every frame the trail will put its new position and very quickly there will appear a lot of different lines. Now that we've got our trail renderer working, we're going to add the lerping system and we're also going to add a step size. Let's first add the step size. Uh, we're going to add a public integer and we'll call this step size. Now as the step size can be bigger than one, we need to keep track of how many iterations we've done. So we need to create another integer to keep track of how many iterations. So we're going to create a private integer and we're going to call this the current iteration. And as we might not want to grow our thrill indefinitely, we're going to set a max iteration. So let's create a public integer and we'll call this the max iteration. Now we're going to set up our lerping system and for that we need to create a boolean so we can specify whether we want to lerp or we want to use the system we've just created. So let's create a public boolean and we'll call this use lerping. And we also need to publicly specify the durations of one point to the next point in our lerp. So we're going to say a public float and we'll call this interval lerp. Now let's just make it clear that these values are about lerping. So I'm just going to comment here lerping. Now we're going to create a function that will be called when the lerp hits its destination and now it will set its start and end position to the new positions. And for that we need to create four more different variables. And the first thing we need is a private boolean and it's called is lerping. So if we are lerping then this is going to be true uh, or false. and we also need a start position and an end position. So these are vector trees. So let's say vector three, and it's going to be called start position and end position. And the final variable that we need is a private float, and this is going to track the time that we are at when we start lerping. So time started lerping. Now let's scroll down and create our function and we're going to call this start lerping. Now let's go to the awake function and in the awake function we're going to say that if we are using the lerping now we want to run the start lerping and in our function start lerping we're going to do the following things we're going to set the is lerping is going to be true when this is run we're going to set the time start lerping is going to be the time dot time. And now we just have to specify the start and the end positions. And the end position is going to be the violet axis position. So let's declare a new violet axis position and it's going to be calculate violet axis at its current degree, scale and number. Now the start position it's going to be this dot transform dot local position, its current position, and the end position is going to be a new vector three, and it will take the violet x position dot x, the violet x position dot y. Now in the fixed update, we are going to check if the lerping is true, and if it's true, then these positions are set, and we're going to lerp from this point to this point until it reaches this point and then it will do this function again. So let's scroll down to the fixed update and the first thing we're going to check in the update is if we're using the lerping. So if use lerping then we're going to do something and else if we're not using the lerping then we're going to do what we've already specified here. We just need to make a few changes. The number is not going to be plus plus, but it's going to be plus is the step size. And the current iteration is going to be plus plus. Now, if we are using lerping, we're going to check if is lerping is ticked on by the function. So we're saying if uh, is lerping. Now in our lerp, we need to check how far along our current lerp is. And for that, we are going to create a new float and we'll call this time since started and it's going to be time dot time 
minus the time started lerping. And how this works is at the function, the time started lerping is becoming the time that it's currently at. And here it checks the current time minus the time that it started lerping. So we get some kind of a duration. Now we can use this into a new float and we'll call this percentage complete. And it's going to be the time since started that we've just specified divided by the interval lerp. Now we can lerp our position. So let's say transform dot local position is going to be a vector three dot lerp. And we're going to lerp from where we're going to take the start position and we're going to the end position and it takes in the percentage complete. Now we still need to check whether the lerp has been completed or not. So we're going to add an if statement and we're going to say that if percentage complete is above or equal to some value and the value is between zero and one where one is 100% of the lerp. And I could set this to one, but sometimes it jumps uh, across the one. So it'll be 1.01 .01. and I don't want this to happen. And I'm not sure if this is the best solution for this. So if you have a better solution, please tell me uh, I'm doing uh, 0.97 F. So it's at 97%. And when it's at this percentage, I will set it to the complete positions at one and then I will reset it. So it will never go beyond its position. So what I'm going to do here is set the transform dot local position to the end position. So it will snap to the end position right there. Now we have to increase the number by the step size. So we'll say number plus is the step size. And we're also going to add to our current iteration. Now we've also set a max iteration. So we're going to add one more if statement and we're going to say that if the current iteration is uh, under or equal to the uh, max iteration, then we're going to run the start lerping again. And if it's not under the max iteration, then we're going to say that is lerping is going to be false. So it will not run this script anymore. Now let's save the script and go back to Unity. Now in the inspector, we see our values here. We need to increase the step size. Let's set it at one. The max iterations will set it to 50. We'll use the lerping and we're going to set the interval lerp to 0 0.3. Let's test this out. And we see that the system is working and it should stop at 50 iterations. Let's increase this time a little bit more. And there it stops. Now with this system working, we can start creating our composition. And the way we're going to do this is creating different trails on top of each other. And as we're setting the local positions of our trails, we need to create a parent object in which we can set the Z offset. So let's create an empty game object. And we'll call this the preset. This is going to be the main uh, game object. Let's create another empty and we'll call this the 137.5 because we're going to set this to the value and let's drag and drop this onto there. So this is going to be our top value. Uh, we're going to set this all to zero and let's now adjust our first trail. We've also got a color slot in the trail renderer in which we can set a certain gradient. I've already created some different gradients. We've got here a color from red to yellow to orange to pink. Let's set the max iterations to 1000 and we're not going to use the lure pin. And this will become our background trail. So if we check it out, you can see a nice color gradient into the trail. So now that we're done with our first trail, let's copy paste this and let's rename this to 51 degrees because we're going to create something at 51 degrees. Now let's set its C value to minus two because it's going to be in front of the 137.5. Now let's go to the trail and we're going to set this at 51. 
we're going to use lerping and the lerp interval will be 0 0.1 seconds let's first see what the 51 degrees does so I'm going to disable the 137.5 and let's check this one out so in this movement you can see that it makes seven different corners so now it has a step size of one but if we make it like a step size of seven then you could get this movement along this line and this movement along this line and I think that looks pretty interesting so let's quit this one let's go to our trail and set the step size to seven and with a step size of seven you can see that it's only following this one corner so the idea here is to copy paste this one seven times two three four five six seven and we're going to set the start number to increase every time so this will start at number one this will start at number two this will start at number three uh, six and this will start at number seven now if we run this we'll get this nice spiral of only lines now let's configure the appearance a little bit so let's select them all and get a new gradient and I'm going to choose this gradient from purple to black now I'm gonna make the width one now let's check out this result very nice now we can turn the 137.5 back on let's see the result of this and now we can see these lines combined into one composition but we're going to add a few more things to it what we're going to do is we're going to copy paste this 51 and we're going to make this minus 51 so what this will do is we just change this 51 to minus 51 and now it should go into the opposite direction of the 51 so if we play this now we're starting to get somewhere I want to play some little bit more detail into it so I'm going to copy paste these two and we're going to change the appearance of these lines as well and they're going to have the same values but we're just going to change the gradient and I'll change the gradient to this color and I'm going to change the width of it to 0 0.2 and we're going to set the positions to be in front so let's say to minus three very nice and the final thing we'll add to this is one more and this is going to be set just in the back right in front of the colored lines of 137.5 so I'm going to set it at 0 0.5 minus and this one will be minus 102 now we'll just change these values to minus 102 we'll set the width a little bit higher to 0 0.5 and we're going to change the gradient of this to black to red now that should be all let's check out the result right here the possibilities are endless in creating some cool art and effects with this this comes to the end of this part in the next part we will look at looping animations and creating 3D effects. I would like to thank you for following this tutorial. If you found this useful, please hit the thumbs up. If you want to stay updated to new content, subscribe to the channel. To support me making these tutorials, consider becoming a patron on my Patreon, and as a thanks, you get access to the project source files.